I am 53 years old and have been working in the field of sustainability for three years. I manage the sustainability department for this economy group, i.e. Media Mark Saturn and all other companies that belong to economy. That's super short. This is very short now. Right now I'm asking. I'm starting to feel my way around it. How did you come to this focus? So how did you get there? I think that's an unconventional way. It's a path that I have not chosen proactively but it has come to me. I'm a lawyer, I worked in contract management as part of my training, and I also started learning from zero in a technical area at Infineon and the semiconductor industry. After that I started working at Media Mark Saturn. In the area of purchasing, purchasing advice and purchasing technology. Exactly the same from zero I had to buy such topics at the data center. So I really really learned a topic while doing and then I had the feeling that after 10 years of purchasing in this company I wanted to do something different. I think it always comes with age. I think I was 50 years old and then you have the feeling okay. Is what I'm doing really good for me in general? Good for my future because you don't have that much time now until you retire is what I really want to do now until the end. I say no, I won't do it, I'd like to do something different, but I was open to everything. So I didn't care what was coming. I like innovations, I like new topics, I like challenges, and then I spoke to our CEO at the time about the group and told him you, I think I'll leave because I'd like to do something different. But if you have something else because I really love the company let me know that was all but three days later he called me and said I have something for you could you do sustainability for the group. We have nothing. And then first of all there was this shock, because I said I'm sorry, but how am I supposed to do sustainability? I have a diesel at home. Yes I eat organic but I really have no idea about sustainability but still this feeling was when I want to change. And that was the point, the first conversation with him. Do I have to do something differently? So I said I'm open to something different, I have to try something out, if I've tried it and don't like it, then I can. Still cancelling, changing and looking for something else new. And that's why I said, very good, wonderful, I'll do it and that's how I started the job. That's how it was. I wasn't looking for the job. He was looking for me. That's great. That's how it should be, but that rarely happens. So you are a lawyer by training and then you only learned on the job or did you do any further training or how did you proceed with the topic of sustainability when the topic was so new to you? I believe sustainability, in fact I have not done any further training. So official training, but what I did really read a lot and I'm still doing that after three years. I really spend the first half hour to an hour of the day reading and understanding what other companies are doing. What is developing? How is sustainability developing? How can you really implement sustainability in companies? And all the regulatory issues are? That's really very big what to do with the EU taxonomy. Or the reporting if you don't read and learn, you're lost every day evening. That on one hand or the other I really do go to webinars. Well, I think Corona has made it a lot easier these days that you can attend webinars online without having to pay. You just have to register at different times and then you already have access. So I think learning without reading is another topic what I like to do is our podcasts. So I like listening to podcasts, there are many people who can do a lot and like to pass on this know-how. I do that myself here too. I'm now doing a podcast internally for the company and I'm passing it on to the people internally, but really it's more of a personal initiative. Very good, very good, just to ask, sustainability in such a technology company, what you are through and through, what does that mean? So innovation and change, I think that's that, that's the focus that I have, how do you bring that together? 
Sustainability with consumer electronics is really with the products we sell. Because at first glance it's like water and oil and the effort was I sit there and look, and I think that's the most important thing. If you haven't known a topic for years, you have a completely different view of the topic. So what have I done? I looked from the business side. How can we bring this in here? How can we bring sustainability to technological things? We started talking to the supplier. Now we have sustainable products, but most importantly, how can we teach sustainability to our customers? And every time you turn on the TV, every time you buy a new fridge, so what does that mean? What can you really pick up and change? That's the way we approach the issues. But it is innovation. And think a bit strategically what can I, what could we do based on my daily actions? That's interesting, which means you're basically learning in order to teach other customers how to do it. Exactly, exactly, and above all not only to the customers, but also to our employees. So, you have to say, that's, that's the most important job, what is sustainability for me? Now we understand, now I have a team that understands too. I didn't have a team at the beginning either. Now I have 19 people working for sustainability and thinking about what we can pass on to our employees. So they can pass it on to someone else too. But it's a daily struggle, that's my personal opinion, like any other subject related to technology. Daily by trying more and sorting out what doesn't work and what works. That's really interesting, you hear it, you're already fascinated by this topic. What are you interested in? What is it that motivates you to continue working on it? Well, I basically like sustainability, but actually, if I'm really, really honest with myself, what I like are new topics, new challenges and innovations because of that. I think it turned out that sustainability is because I live more sustainably now, because I believe in what I'm doing and working right now. It's fun, I get up every morning and I'm so I'd say 90% of the time I'm super motivated, in a good mood. It's fun what we do, but deep down, this is the daily challenge. Okay, what can I change today? What new things can we do? And I think if you told me from now on you have to be a CFO, or work in logistics, I would assume exactly the same thing. So it's more the attitude you have. No matter what comes of your job, to do the greatest thing, where I always say you spend 90% of the time when you are awake at work if I don't have this side nice, then I'm lost and then I only work for him vacation or for the weekend and that must not be. It's an everyday, everyday life. I think you mainly sell consumer goods, but you probably also use a lot of technology in your work process. What is your understanding of this? Do you like using it? So is that what you're like? When new technologies come up that you can try, are you kind of excited or how do you deal with them? Yes, exactly you have, and above all with sustainability, technology development is the basis, because when you know, we have in Paris, we also have a country like Germany said at some point okay, we will be carbon neutral by 2050. Nobody has any idea how we're going to get there. And that's exactly what happens in the other jobs. So you really have to see if there isn't any technological advancement if we don't achieve those goals. That's why for me technology is, let's say, the basis of what I do, because every time a little more develops, you can see that with the devices, if you have hydrogen, if you don't have any noises, if you can now buy appliances with energy class A instead of E back then, now we'll see watching TV is still really bad, but the technology is coming out in such a way that you can use it that way. That's a point.
The second point is that when it comes to sustainability, you have to bring together an extremely large amount of data and you can only do it in such a large company if you really know technology and I'm really talking about IT. So I need the technique. I now need a platform where I can bring all my data together. And yes, it's difficult to always work with the tech, but you have to think there are people who can do it. We're learning and we're using all this technology to our advantage, but that's also a subject I, like I said, I read every day and I read a lot about technology, so what can you do? You don't need to know the details. You just have to get into the topic and then bit by bit you'll learn how it works. Is there some future technology you are so waiting for or hoping for, or where you think that could be something that could help you significantly? Yeah, well I, I think there are two things that are coming, I'm pretty sure one is just how can we use less energy and naturally how can we use these energies? That's not clear yet, so if you're standing there today you can buy green electricity, you can do that too, but if you're thinking about gas. So buying green gas like this is super difficult, just like district cooling, district heating, these are topics where you say the technologies have to come, that these, these energy sources are really more sustainable, so that's one topic, the other topic I really believe in the resources, how can we use fewer resources every day and recycle as much as possible? So how how can we reuse products or use parts that are reused for other products? That's what I see, that's what we introduced recently, this coffee, that's just a coffee machine with the coffee tabs and they're really recyclable. We no longer have the capsule and also the machine as the machine is produced like you like you all the parts of the machine are made from recycled products. Or you can use materials, that's the future for me, because in the end resources are getting scarce now. What role does artificial intelligence already play for you, or are you more likely to do it? Well, that's a topic that's totally in right now and we see that every day with the chat and how we use it. This is extremely important to me when we talk about our customers, what are the customers' expectations, how can we learn from customer behavior, how can we also learn what the customer wants, because until now you mustn't forget that the industry as a whole was thinking what can I do, and maybe the customer does. Okay, and then you're lucky if the customer really made what a product is. But with artificial intelligence you can really go in a very targeted manner. On what the customer really wants and then you focus on the products that you can offer the customers. So that's a really good thing for the topic too. If you have questions, you can see that nowadays too, when you I've seen on Expedia how cool it is when you say okay, you want to book a vacation and then you really can say a bit with ChatGPT inside Expedia what you like, what you don't like and he'll look for you around the corner and say exactly. For the week to see if the weather is better, if it's really hot, so if the topic of customers and customers work satisfactorily, only with artificial intelligence. So now, as you can see, somehow you are growing, you have to grow along with these technologies, so to speak, in order to fill a topic at all. What would you like to learn next? Do you already have something on the agenda that you want to deal with a little more comprehensively next? Or do you let yourself be carried away by the challenges of everyday life? It's a little mixed. It's both. So I like, no matter what, as you say technology, what will be the next step? 
but that's kind of the job I'm doing right now. And the other thing is, in my career I never thought about where I would like to be in certain years. Never, everything turned out the way it did. But if you ask me, I guess as you get older, you'll see better what you're good at and what you're not so good at, so you can really make plans. What are the next steps? Where do you want to go and if you ask me, I like sustainability, I also like companies as such. So I can well imagine that I would go in the direction of corporate management or in the direction of starting my own startups, also in the direction of sustainability. So I would see myself in that direction. But if you had asked me 10 years ago, I did not know it. I would have been surprised, and now that I've gotten older I have more goals. But funnily enough, my goal is still not, because I talk to a lot of people who say yes, at 53 you can already start planning how you retire, so how do you retire? And that's not the case with me. So I feel like I still have, no idea, 30 years to do business to keep growing with the new themes that are coming. That's why further development. The nice thing is that we now have this need for skilled workers and everyone who somehow wants to shape the future is desperately needed, that's the great thing. Yes, exactly. What career opportunities do you see for women who are not yet related to this whole tech sector? to get in there? So what would you recommend? How can you possibly pursue a career in this direction? And, and, I think I see, I see it easier than a lot of people would because I believe and that's where the difference between women and men is really important. A man and, I told you that briefly, I also deal with the topic of diversity women and retail, how can we really get women into management positions and what I noticed in the newspaper, everything I read about is that you know you two men if you ask a man please can you do your job. A man will think I can only do 10%, but I can do 90%. And I would immediately say yes, of course I'll do it. If you ask the same question to a woman, the woman will start with me, but I can't do that, and I can't do that, I have to learn that first and then I would start. And for me that is one of the less sustainable, how can I put it, not so great issues that we women have, that we want to have everything secure, want to be sure that we will do our best. And my recommendation is just try it, so men do the same. No man comes forward because he can already do everything, but because he tries it out but is not afraid. That's why my recommendation would not be a specific topic but already this feeling. When I say shoe sizes, don't just take the same shoe size for the next job, go one shoe or a half bigger for the job and just jump in. I believe in technology, there isn't a job today that doesn't involve technology. So of course, just read a lot, you have many options on the internet, including listening to podcasts and then. If you have a few ideas as to which topics might be interesting and if you just go up there, just try them out first. Inquiries as to whether you can come in and I believe that many people I know who have simply tried better than that are accepted and they learn in this on the job. So that means women like to get a certificate first or they prefer to complete a course of study to be on the safe side. But is it somehow possible? So do you recommend any time investment, which you can maybe take in advance before you really venture into the tech industry? So I think there is. 
So if you really want to learn something, there are definitely distance learning courses you can do. You don't really have to quit the job completely, but that depends a bit on whether you want to go more into the general tech stuff or if you say no. I want to be a software developer. Because I'm even involved in software development, I've also had cases here of women who told me they wanted to go into agile development. Come on, do further training in agile coaching, for example, and then you start with agile coaching and you know what it's about, and then you step into the job little by little. So that, that would be a good topic really if you go into tech if it's a bit more general I guess it depends on the topic. In fact, you can do one another training. A month, two months that definitely helps. When it comes to a module in a subject, however, I wouldn't do my career. Stop immediately and somehow insert a two-year study. I believe books are good but I believe that learning by doing is even better. I think so too, because then you also have your finger on the pulse of the times. Total. You learn from others, you know, the neighbor does it that way and then you watch what that is. Well I tell them copy with pride is always good. Learn and do what others are doing. Yes, great, I think the tech industry is also far too fast moving for you to be able to learn anything in advance. Last question, what would you say to women over 45, who we are primarily addressing, what advice would you give them so that they can help shape the future? Because I would like to add that I have just seen a statistic again that in Western Europe and especially in Western Germany very few women work in the tech industries, so the proportion is very low on a European level. What I believe is that we also need them in these tech sectors so that they are more diverse, so that the technologies also become more diverse. What advice can you give women on their way? I believe. Why we have fewer women is also explained in the company. I'm also looking at the numbers and seeing how we have fewer women in tech than in other areas, HR or marketing as an example. I think these are limits that women set themselves, I think, when they think about tech. Basically, a woman says I have no idea, oh, that sounds difficult, although it is not difficult. They think that sounds difficult and then they don't deal with the topic. I think the first step as a woman would be to recognize your fears, but to put them aside and say, yes, I would like to try something different. Just try it. So I mean experience here of course now. I say it totally funny. I think women work, I prefer to work with women than with men. Women are more diverse, they then want to work in teams, it's not just career, 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 so working with women is more pleasant, that's my impression and I would simply advise women not to be afraid. Don't worry, and that's that's the worst thing that can happen to you and it starts at home with I have to build something, so crafting about it, oh I can't do that. Yes, you can. Just grab a cordless screwdriver and do it. And when you do it, and of course you won't do it perfectly, but you realize that your limits are shifting because you can do more and more. So I think that's definitely a little bit of overcoming that fear. That's a great final word Anna. Thank you very much for your time and for your answers and ideas and thoughts and wish you a nice day and stop recording now. Thank you. Thank you.